Here we go. Let's make it a good day. We do it our own way. Let's make it a good day. Oh, no matter what they say. Oh, yeah. Make it a good day, everyone. We are live. And we are ready to go. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Jason Show. We have a full house today and a great show ahead. Give it up for my sidekick sister, Demi Hart, everybody. Hello, my lovely. They're ready to go. Hi, everybody. I know. The decibel level is up a little high today. There's a team from Rosemount. Welcome to the show. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Let's get started. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I think we should have the Rosemount ladies here every week. I mean, my goodness. Yeah, that's fantastic. And then I love my, my right side as well. Right there. Let's go over there. Yes. <laughs> Later, they're going to have a snowball fight live on the show. That's right. The right side versus the left side. That's right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm great. If you weren't awake before, you're awake you're now. You're completely awake now. This That's exciting. right. Oh, I waited. This, uh, Jeff, I've been waiting all day to hear this. Jeff wouldn't let me tell you this. So, uh, <laughs> so I've been given, I've been giving uh, Colin a hard time at home mm -hmm. because uh, he has been playing the uh, the Harry, the Harry Potter game. Oh, the, okay. The Legacy, the uh, uh, Hogwarts Legacy game. Yeah, it's the, like newer, right? It's new. It came okay. out. Yeah, it's breaking records anyway. So I keep laughing that every time I come in, mm -hmm. he's playing it. And I was, we were gone. We mm -hmm. stayed at a hotel for the Snowmageddon. Yes. And I joked on the, I, I joked on the radio. I said, right about now, Colin is playing this, the Harry Potter game, mm -hmm. and he's ignoring everything else. Mm -hmm. So. I got. I decided to come home last night. We all did, and uh, I come home, hanging out, and then Colin comes in after work, and he walks in, and I I notice something, mm -hmm. and I didn't say anything right away, and I just let it sit there, and then later in the night we're watching TV, and I took a better look at him, and I looked at his wrists, okay. and I went, what the hell's on his wrists? Yeah. And he took them off. He had wrist support bracelets on and I went I go what the hell is that and he goes and I quote I hurt my wrist playing Harry Potter <laughs> Colin, like, too much of this I looked at him and I go and he goes Jason <laughs> he said Jason don't make a big deal about this on the show oh, God. <laughs> I said are you kidding me it was a half hour of the radio show, and it's the first thing I'm telling you this morning. No, he said I could. No, he said I could. He goes, you're going to have a, he said I could. He goes, you're going to have a field day with this, aren't you? And I go, yes. I, I said, you hurt. Now, he does want me to be specific. Okay. He didn't hurt his wrist. It's his thumb and this area this. that hurts because he's not a regular gamer. I said, for the love of Oprah Winfrey, how long did you play while I was gone? And he said, upwards of four hours. Yeah. Okay, can I tell you a secret? And all of you, hi, secret time. Yeah, we are on TV. Hello. Go ahead. No, tell me. I, I had to wear tennis, like those tennis elbow support things you get. Let me not drink coffee while you say this. <laughs> because I got really into a Sarah J Moss book and there are a thousand pages and the book was so heavy that my like wrist and like elbow started cramping up and hurting. <laughs> so I had to go to the doctor and get a support brace for my elbow because I was reading a fantasy book. <laughs> Fairy fantasy, like sword that fighting. That is the nerdiest injury I've ever heard in my life. So and I'm here for it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Poor Colin. send get well cards to 11358. 
<laughs> if you want to send, I can drive. You, if you follow Colin, just send him a, a get well card on the D. Uh, I don't know. I laughed. The dog. I scared the dogs because I laughed so hard. Poor because dogs. they're then they're the little braces sit on our coffee table. So so I, I went to bed early last night. I go, are you gonna play? I felt like I was. Are you gonna play Harry Potter when I go to bed? He goes, no, I'm taking a break. You need you an aspirin. He needs a day. I'm gonna get him. You know, little carpal tunnel things. He's gonna be fine. Let's get started. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Steve. <laughs> First up, it was the uh, end of an era last night on Grey's Anatomy. Ellen Pompeo, I know, I'm sorry, Aaron. Ellen Pompeo said, so long, Seattle, and the show that she made a huge hit. Take a look. That's the book? Yes, I got an advanced copy. Hold on, guys. Hi, we're on the plane. I love you. I fell in love with you the first day I met you. I fell in love with you the second day I met you. And I've loved you every minute of every day that I have known you. Meredith? Um, I... I Meredith. I can't quite hear you. Meredith. We're about to take off. So, I'll call you when we get settled. Meredith. Meredith. Let's be clear, you still love Felicity. <laughs> Thank you. The Rosemont girls are like, who the hell is Felicity? <laughs> you old, decrepit man. Yeah. It was a show on the WB, which they don't even know what the WB is. It was a network that was represented by a frog. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Then it was a great show, mm -hmm. and then she cut her hair, and then it was canceled. But I'm just saying. Because she cut her hair? Who is that? I don't know. I don't watch these shows. I have no idea who that man is. You used to watch Grey's. I told you I quit when what's her name left? Sandra O. Oh, oh, when that's she right. left, I left. Well, Bye. anyway, so the show marked Ellen's last show as a full time cast member. Now, Ellen got mad because, and I get it, because ABC was like, she's leaving. She wants people to know she is still scheduled to return for the finale and could appear beyond that. Uh, Ellen is, by the way, uh, leaving to do a show on Hulu. Mm. Look, you can't begrudge her. She's been on there since 2004. A long you know, that's time. a long time to do one character. Well, and to just keep improving it. Like that. You know what that reminded me of, though? What? Friends finale. Remember when uh, uh, Ross called Rachel uh -huh. and then left a message? They don't even know friends? Oh my God! <laughs> They know, they know like, friends, know they friends. know friends. Yeah, anyway, yeah. <laughs> but you remember the finale? No. Get off the plane, get off the plane. I got off the plane. I Remem don't remember. The okay. Oh, wow, it's going to be a long 50 minutes. Okay. <laughs> Buckle up. Next in the dish, the Warner Brothers Discovery merger has left a lot of projects on the cutting room floor, but one franchise is coming back in a really big way, and Kendall is very excited. Yes! The company has brokered a deal. How fancy is that? To make several more Lord of the Rings movies. The first two trilogies, well, this is why. Cha-ching, cha-ching. The first two trilogies made upwards of $6 billion. Now, look, we know... Other, you're looking at the headline, and that's all we know. We don't know when this is going to come out. We don't know what era. Mm -hmm. the, we don't know if Frodo's coming back with those like Frodo children. Frodo we don't know any, any. We don't know anything. When, because the Lord of the Rings took place in an era of mm -hmm. Middle Earth. Yeah. And then we have the eight bazillion dollar Amazon show uh -huh. that takes place in a different era. Yes, thousands of years before then. When do you think they could make new movies? I think you'd have to go. Okay, what? Well, ready to nerd out? Carpal tunnel. Uh, the Silmarillion. The what? The Silmarillion. So this was Jair. Oh, like I can't get it. Are you really going to explain yes. this? Jair Tolkien wrote all these different sort of like sketched up what could have been another book of his, but it never made it into a book before he passed away. So other people have kind of put it together and made it into the Silmarillion that is all about Middle Earth before like the elves when they started and all those fights. And there's like elvish language and there's a lot of different battles. It's no unclear when on. we can expect any of the new movies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
Am I muted yet? Am I muted? <laughs> I know. No, I'm a nerd. We nerd mm -hmm. out together. We you nerd out. Star Wars. And you have Lord of the Rings, and together we love each other. And we love ne Harry Potter. That's right. Next in the dish, uh, Halle Bailey is opening up about all. Oh, if you listen to the radio show today, it was a half hour of me going off on several topics, two of which I'll go off on today's show. Oh. Um, first up. Halle Berry, uh, Halle Bailey is opening up about all the backlash that she has received since she was cast as Ariel in The Little Mermaid. Critics, and by that we mean awful people, believe that Ariel should only be played by a white actress. In a new interview, Halle said, as a black person, you just expect it at this point, and it's not really a shock anymore. But she said when the teaser came out, she was just so happy that she didn't even have to pay attention to the negativity exactly. Focus on the positive. Meanwhile, she said she was flooded, flooded with reaction from black parents who posted their kids' reactions. That actually went viral, and it was, if you want your heart to sing a little bit, watch those. Anyway, we would play it, but we can't afford the rights. Um, <laughs> uh, she said it makes her feel even more grateful. Here's what I want to tell people. Why do you care? Seriously? And also, uh, here's a secret. Mermaids aren't real. <gasps> I mean, you know, this <laughs> And look, and I, I, I'm, uh, I, I'm gonna get Diet Coke angry about this because oh, light I, version. I, because yeah, fewer calories, same great flavor is what I mean. But I, yeah. why uplifting another community doesn't diminish you mm -hmm. and. As a kid that didn't see a lot of people that were like him, and I mean gay people on TV, when I did see Will and Grace as a young adult, it means a lot. Why do you care that little black girls are looking at the Little Mermaid and seeing themselves reflective, reflected back to them? Guess what? We have an Ariel too. I mean, we have an Ariel from 1989. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it, and again, they're not real. It's, the mermaids are fake. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have people in my orbit, in my galaxy, who are, who are bothered by this. And, and somebody last week, a week ago, told me about it. And I go, oh, you need to stop telling me about this because I'm in a really good mood and this is going to ruin it for a week <laughs> because it's not that big. It's not a big deal. No. It's a big deal to those little girls and that's all that should matter. This is going to be a great movie. And Hallie, young lady, I can't wait to support you and watch it. <laughs> Ridiculous. Don't worry about it. We'll be right back. More audience uh, stealth selfies from earlier in the week. Don't forget to sign up. To be in our studio audience, go to eventbrite.com or the Eventbrite app and search for The Jason Show. We'll be right back, back in a moment. Hank Azaria was on with Colbert last night and he talked about a guilty pleasure. And that, my friends, is our Late Night Rewind. I started watching The Bachelor again. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I'm like a full Pacino Godfather 3, like, they pulled me back in. Steve. Oh. But you know, I, I am a, you know, it's like I have a love-hate relationship with the show. Mm -hmm. uh, because um, I have like OCD rituals around it. Like I, I count the likes, for example. Oh, like, like, like. Yeah, like, 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 uh, the record, by the way, is 33 likes in a two minute and 22 second conversation. <laughs> and yes. it's always, it drives me insane. It's always some young lady with a vocal fry. Yeah, who's sure. like, um, so like, I just wanted to like talk because like, um, <laughs> we like had this like connection at first. And then like, like now, like, I kind of threw up in my mouth like a little bit because like I'm afraid you're like not here for like the right reasons. And I just want you to know that like I, I don't just like you, I like I like 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 you. So and thanks a lot. Very true. He's right. Ted. Every week when Ted does the segments, that's what I think. Well, next, it's time for a special serving of hot dish all the way from Hollywood. Please give it up for our Friday friend, Jacob Wasserman from TMZ. Hi, Jacob. Hey, hey, Jason. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, my friend. So first up, let's get the latest on the Alec Baldwin situation. He uh, is responding to the charges in the, the shooting. What's going on? What's the latest? 
Yes, so Alec Baldwin just pled not guilty in the fatal death of Helena Hutchins, the cinematographer on the film Rust. So what does that mean? That means he was supposed to attend a hearing today and he is not gonna be there anymore. And the conditions of his release mean he, is, he cannot have a gun, he cannot drink, and he cannot speak with any other witnesses unless they are talking about the film Rust. So keep in mind, he was initially charged with involuntary man manslaughter and a gun enhancement charge. Since then, the gun enhancement charge was dropped, meaning he was initially facing up to five years in prison and now only faces up to 18 months. And I would be shocked, frankly, if he gets any jail time at this point, he might just get probation, but that we'll wait to see how that plays out. And as for the film Russ, it was just announced that this movie is going to pick back up filming in Montana this upcoming spring. So just amazing that they're what? continuing with this film uh, in light of this uh, court case going on. No one's going to watch that movie now. I disagree. I think honestly, a you, lot yeah, of people are right. curious to see what, what the movie's all about now, just given the fact that this has been almost a full year media cycle with all the drama that's played out after this fatal, uh, tragic death with Alina Hutchins. Per usual, Jacob, you are right. The moment it came out of my <laughs> mouth, I thought, wait a minute, the, the curiosity factor. Uh, speaking of curiosity factor, we all wondered about him in 2020. Joe Exotic, why is he in the news again? I, I mean, this is pretty unfortunate. So as you know, Joe Exotic is still behind bars and he has been battling prostate cancer for quite some time. And we learned that it sounds like this, his cancer has spread, but he is surprisingly refusing treatment. So he apparently has been dealing with some bleeding as he's been undergoing uh, treatment for prostate cancer. And he met with a urologist who said that it looks like that some blood has, has spread or his cancer has spread into his bladder. And he, the urologist is saying we need to undergo testing to which Joe Exotic is refusing. He just wants this to play it out itself. And right now the thing that he's more focused on fighting is his justice. He wants to show people that the uh, that that what he's dealing with is not fair at all and he should be out of prison. And he's really focused on spending time with his fiance, Seth. If you missed our report, he created a new will where he is leaving everything for this guy, Seth, who he met online. And unfortunately for Joe, he still has 20 more years to spend behind bars. Uh, but just sounds like right now he's really focused with being with the one he loves. Finally, lightening it up a little bit, Matthew Lawrence uh, has a new romance uh, and it's a member of TLC. Yes, where have you been? Matthew Lawrence I know. and Chili. Matthew Lawrence and Chili have been together for a while now. They, they just started dating right after Thanksgiving. And uh, it took another step, a big step here, because they, despite being with one another for a couple months now, decided to go Instagram official. And we all know that that's as big of a step as you could take. So they, they, they were, they were uh, dancing with each other on Instagram. And we caught Matthew out walking through the streets of Sherman Oaks the other day. And he told us, uh, hey, Chili's one of the most spectacular people I've ever met. And I think, you know, I, I, it doesn't get more of a compliment than that. And uh, he was with his brothers, and I guess they're all starting a podcast with each other where Matthew is going to start talking a little bit more about his relationship with Chili. He's kind of kept his cards close to his chest thus far, but uh, I guess he's going to be spilling the tea on this new podcast. But all in all, it seems like they are having a great time with one another. Jacob, have a good weekend. Thank you, my friend. You I'll too. see you next Friday. Thank you, Jason. You can follow Jacob on Instagram as well. And I always like to pop culture educate. If you're like, who's Matthew Lawrence? He was the brother in Mrs. Doubtfire. Mm -hmm. And he's the brother of Joey Lawrence from Blossom. Whoa. He was yeah. really big in like the 90s. He was really big, but oh. still looks good. Good. Yeah. 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 Again, yeah. God, two hands. Yeah. Next on the dish. And just like that, it appears Sam Smith is entering the chat. Sam posted on an Instagram from the set of season two of HBO Max's and just like that. And it appears the Grammy winner is making an appearance in season two of the Sex in the City spinoff. St uh, Sam said, quote, up to something unholy on set, a nod to their Grammy, women, uh, Grammy winning sequel, Unholy. By the way, season two is expected to hit HBO Max this summer. So we have Aiden coming back oh. on and just like that. Whew. Were you an Aiden? Did you like Aiden? Oh yeah, hubba bubba, melt yeah. butter. Yes. The more, no, 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 I loved Aiden. 
when you watch Sex in the City later, uh -huh. you really do realize Carrie is horrible. She yeah. really is horrible. She really is. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Colin hates her. We watch and he goes, oh, God, I can't stand Carrie. I mean, he hates her. But he, she is kind of the anti-hero. You're not supposed to love her. Right. You know, mm -hmm. she's not built that way. Oh, Aiden, I'm so excited. When I'm, that came out, it was like, <gasps> I'm, tr I'm cautiously optimistic for season two. Okay. Because season one was a little dour. I mean, you know. You're right. It wasn't like the funny, funky. No, and we every hoping. episode doesn't need to be an after school special, please. Seriously. Oh, Lord, right? Lighten it up a little bit. Oh. I don't I don't need Sarah, you know, I don't need Krista. I don't need them teaching me one. lessons. No. Mm -hmm. I'm there for superficial fun. And fashion. Next, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of fun, next in the dish, fans of Wayne's World are speculating that there could be a third movie coming. Uh, now, this is all because of a photo posted on Instagram by Dana Carvey. Look at that. <laughs> I haven't seen that until now. He wrote the uh, caption, Garth says, I like to paint. Fans immediately chimed in that this is a sign that they're doing a third movie. Well, of course, or a commercial. The Super Bowl's over, mm -hmm. so let's knock off all the other possibilities. Mm -hmm. It's not a Super Bowl commercial. That thing's done. Right. So it's a what third movie. That's it. That's what the only thing. Yeah. Do we need that? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, you, the left side of the audience does, it doesn't want one and you don't, but I mean, yeah. Uh, this was huge back in our, no, right. Wayne's World was one of the best Saturday Night Live to movie movies. Right. You know? Right. I, I mean, I get it. I get it. I get it. I don't know if you do, though. I don't, really I don't know. And that's all right. You shouldn't. It Party was... on, Wayne. Okay. 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 That was good. Oh, on, I like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got one line. Yeah, that was good. Next to the disc, just into the Jason Show newsroom. Oh, what? Oh, wow. We have a snow maritan alert to tell you about. <laughs> now, now. Let me explain this. Uh, Steve, don't roll the video yet. So if, if you missed the last few episodes of our show, mm -hmm. uh, producer Ted went to the Toro, is it Toro, Jeff? Toro. Went mm -hmm. to the Toro factory, uh, or Toro land or whatever. Toro uh, land. Where, where they make, where snow, plow, uh, snow blowers are born. Yes. And uh, Ted, Ted tried his hand, and, uh -huh. and we, we learned the term, yes. not good Samaritan, yes. good snow Maritan, mm -hmm. where you, if you have a snow blower, you snow blow your neighbor's house if you like them, if right. they're good, you right. know. It's very you kind. You don't want to go to the creepy neighbor's house. So we learned this, we learned this term yesterday, and Beth sent us this video of her husband Dan using his new snow blower on the neighbor's driveway. Aww. We thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> We <laughs> thank you for your service to Apple Valley. That's right. Or wherever you are. If you or someone you know is showing signs of being a snow maritan, send us the video. No. That's right, yeah. Is this a thing? Uh, now Do look. You? Let me, let me, I like to make, I like to poke fun at him. Uh -huh. uh, and he gives me a lot of reasons. My father-in-law, I yes. call him Archie Bunker and I'm Meathead. And that gives you a glimpse into the dynamic of our relationship. Mm -hmm. But Archie, mm -hmm. I gotta say, Archie has every man tool they have. He has a, a, a bobcat. Man tool. He has trucks, he has a plow. Ooh. And he, Sorry. Well, I don't have any of these things. It's a man tool. But he, he, he plows some of his neighbors. He does all. He does a That's lot of nice. it. That's nice. Yeah, it's nice. My husband does that for our neighbors. He's nice. Yeah. I like him. Yeah. You, well, it's good that you like your husband, <laughs> for heaven's sake. I'll keep it. I like your husband. I know. I know. It's time to meet today's JVIP. Today, it's Becky Moore from Brooklyn Park. Hi, Becky. <laughs> Becky says she loves... Becky loves the pop culture, our hot dish. She looks forward to us every day and appreciates the efforts in making the whole hour fun. Becky gets a Jason Show mug in her to win the monthly grand prize as well. That includes coming to our studio and being a VIP guest, a $150 gift card to Becker Furniture World, and a $150 gift card to our new sponsor, the Institute of Advanced Aesthetics. That's right. We have a lot more ahead. Stay right there. We'll be back after this. Coming up in just a little bit.
No one wants to leave their house, so why not make a great dinner with stuff that you already have in your pantry? The Cooking Mom is back to show you how. And American Girl Dolls are making us feel very, very old. That and more when we return. still snowed in or have absolutely zero desire to go outside. Our next guest has two recipes made from things that you probably have in your pantry. Audience, give it up for the cooking mom, Amy Hatton. I'm here. I just went to go <laughs> grab. Not, hey, Jace, I, Amy, how are you? I thought, where the hell are you going? I just introduced no, you. I, so first of all, I was supposed to be there in person, but that darn snow. So we decided to play it safe. So thanks for letting me do this for my home kitchen. Yeah, so I, I uh, don't really want to go to the grocery store. Definitely didn't want to go out yesterday. So I got you. I got you covered. Today, I'm going to show you how to make two things. You probably have most of the ingredients in your house right now. Or next time you go to the grocery store, get this stuff so that you can make it when you just need to pull dinner out of a hat. So we're talking about, um, first of all, making an ooey, gooey, delicious, cheesy, toasty tuna melt. And, and Jace, do you have a, a can of tuna in, in your kitchen? Come on. Do you? Um. <laughs> what? Um. Yeah. No. You know what? I think I do actually. So let's, for the sake of the segment, yes, cooking mom, I do. Yes. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't. I'm gonna bring you tuna next time. Okay. So I love a good tuna melt, and they are so easy. And and mine starts with a super good tuna salad because that's where it all starts, right? So you you have to make my tuna salad recipe because it's the best ever. I get good quality tuna. I like the water packs. Do you get what tuna you like? I'm using three small cans, or I like to get the one big can. I think it's a better value, and I think there's better tuna in there. Uh, finely diced celery. I like a lot of celery. I like a lot of crunch. I'm also going to do a little bit of diced red pepper. But again, if you don't have this stuff, make your tuna salad. I just want to give you some tips on how I make mine, and uh, it really people really love it. I'm doing a little bit of green onion. Some people, that's kind of a thing. Do people like onion in their tuna salad? Some people don't. Uh, the green onion is kind of a mellow flavor. It's not, not like onion overload. Sometimes too much onion, and that's all you can taste. So, but use whatever onion you have. Um, and then I, the secret ingredient. I've got two secret ingredients. My dad, who's no longer with us, used to love my tuna salad sandwiches, and he would say like, "Why is it so good?" And I'm like, "Dad, it's all about a boatload of fresh dill, fresh chopped dill." Now you may not have fresh dill in your in your fridge right now i have Dry that dill i have dill work. amy do? i do have dill in what? my yes uh, how could you have dill and not tuna we need to talk okay so <laughs> then uh, fresh lemon juice is super important because it cuts down that tuna that fishiness you know what i'm talking about and then good quality mayo i know there's a whole debate some people like mayo some people like that salad dressing i you know um i really like the the more savory mayo so get it all in there, maybe a little salt and pepper. Now I'm doing these open faced on toasted English muffins, but you do you. If you just have like a bun, you don't want to go outside of the house or a French baguette or a piece of toast, that's all going to work. Uh, and lots of great recipes for Lent. We're in the Lenten season and that means some people don't eat meat um, on Fridays on my website. So I've got a couple different ways to chew tuna melts and I do a mean crab melt, uh, sandwich. So here's my uh, toasted English muffins. I kind of like that they're open space um, and you can that way you can have one or you can have two. And I'm going to make a, a delicious my best ever tomato basil soup in just a minute which goes perfect with that. I like a little tomato on my tuna melt but again that's up to you. We're out of tomato season so definitely season those tomatoes with a little bit of salt and pepper because they need it. And then a little cheese on top, American Swiss, whatever you have, shredded, sliced, it really doesn't matter. But I, I got to have some cheese on my uh, tuna melt. This is kind of a uh, new, healthier way to do it. Old school tuna melt, you know, you do it in butter and fry it like a grilled cheese, and this is a little more healthy. I'm going to pop it under the broiler to warm the tuna, melt the cheese, and we will get back to you tuna melt in just a minute. Okay. Tomato basil soup. I mean, there's nothing better, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like a hug in a bowl. And really good tomato basil soup at, a, at a, a, a nice restaurant can cost you like 12 or more bucks a bowl. Make it at home. This is amazing. So we're going to start with, um, again, pantry staples. 
four cans of diced tomatoes. If you can pick up next time you go to the grocery store, the fire roasted, it gives it even more flavor. Uh, but if all you have is the regular diced tomatoes, that will work. So four cans or two of the big 28 ounce cans. Then we're gonna hit this with a quarter of a cup, a whole boatload of dried basil. Dried basil doesn't have a lot of flavor and we really want this soup to have some great tomato basil flavor. So this is just a dried basil. I know you've got that. Jake. I do, I, know you do. I do. A little bit of sugar, just because it balances out the tomatoes and just gives a touch of sweetness. And if you wanna leave the sugar out, it's all a-okay. And then we're gonna hit this with a boatload of heavy cream. A good one to two cups. Uh, or you could lighten it up and do half and half like you put in your coffee or even milk, but boy, that heavy cream really is good. Now at this point, get this to a simmer. And if you have one of these handy dandy immersion blenders, I do. I literally, I, I am weird. I, I, I cook a lot, so I do, I have every gadget. I do have that one and I love it. Wow. And you know what? I remember when they first came out and they were like expensive. They're not expensive no. now. Um, but they really will do a nice job of pureeing your soup. And the nice thing about it is you can do it right in the pot. If you don't have one, again, don't have to run out and buy one. But it's real important to cool that soup down a little bit and then put it in your blender and, and puree it. You don't want to put hot soup into a blender. You'll have that exploding blender. I'll tell you that story another time. It wasn't a fun one. Okay. <laughs> Pea soup. White kitchen cabinets, the, they were green after that whole disaster. I learned the hard way. So here's the tomato basil soup. It's all nice and pureed. And I'm going to add two more ingredients. Um, I'm going to do some fresh uh, shredded mozzarella cheese uh, or Parmesan cheese or, again, even cheddar cheese. A little bit of cheese at the end is just, I mean, cheese. You know, what yeah. can we say? A little bit of cheese, cheese in that soup. And, yeah, and then I like, look at that. Kind yeah, it's a little. Mm, yeah, we're Amy, talking. And Amy, we have yeah, Amy, we oh, have we about thirty. Time. I want to see those melts. Okay, okay, I don't... Yeah, I want to show you the melts. Where's my? Uh, okay, here it is. And then, oh my gosh, oh yeah, they're melting. They're getting yummy, yummy, yummy. So here's my tuna melt. Again, lots of great recipes on my website. I've got a newsletter. It's free. Thecookingmom.com. Jace, my website is brand new and designed, and it is beautiful. Lots of recipes. Lots of kitchen tips. I'm leading culinary trips. Check it out. It's real pretty. And then that, I like to do a little bit of you, fresh basil or maybe even Parmesan on top. I wish you could have some of this. It's I know I do too because Amy <laughs> always makes me lunch when she's here. And I just, you. Amy, your dog, your dog Arlo? is mo your dog is like sharking around that kitchen, just waiting for this segment to be over. Yeah, totally. We totally. love you. Thanks, Amy. Brisa love visit her brand new website, thecookingmom.com, and make sure to sign up for her newsletter. Uh, I have um, I have something to say when we return. Back in a moment. <laughs> It's not because of this, but uh, it's ironic that today is actually uh, stand up to bullying day. Um, and if you watch this show uh, or listen to the radio show, you know that I always end the show with go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. And because I end the show like that, I better walk the walk and talk the talk, even on a goofy show like ours. And this is one of those times where I'm going to stop the fun and just speak directly to you because two situations have come to light in the last 24 hours that has literally bugged the hell out of me. And the first one is vicious, not criticism, but vicious, horrible attacks on colleagues of mine in the meteorological department. Uh, I know that the snore storm wasn't what some predicted. I will say though, the team at Fox 9 was almost perfect in their prediction. I'll just say that. But over the last, but over the last 24 hours, some colleagues and friends of mine have been on the receiving end of not fair criticism or jokes, but vicious, vicious messages, some homophobic, some violent, some threats, all because of snow. The science of, meteor of meteorology isn't a perfect science. If it was, or if it was easy, we could all do it. I know the jokes of, well, I could take a dart and throw it, I have even made myself. But these professionals look at 10, 12 models and, and look at that data and craft a forecast to keep all of us safe. And they do the best that they can. They do the best that they can to keep us safe. Criticism, they can take. Violence, 
and unnecessary vitriol? No, not necessary for something like this. They can't defend themselves without getting in trouble, but I sure the hell can defend them. <laughs> now, just be better. Be better part two. I am really sick of having to come on this show and defend female colleagues of mine. In 1997, when I started at WCCO at 22 years old in the dispatch shack, I would take messages from people calling to comment on the outfits of Amelia Santanello. Not commenting on her professionalism, not, count, not commenting on her work ethic, but commenting on her hair, the length of her skirt, how she looked in a certain outfit. Never once in the three years I worked at WCCO or this station have I ever taken a comment about a male colleague of mine. Two years ago, I had to stop down the show to defend another female colleague. And these people aren't asking me to do this, but Elizabeth Reese, my friend from our competing show, Twin Cities Live, who was on the receiving end of some of the grossest comments I've ever read about, you guessed it, her appearance, how she looked in a certain outfit. Any of that go to her co-host Steve at the time? No. Yesterday, this one was on the receiving end of unnecessary attacks on her appearance. Not liking her skirt, people calling the station to complain about it. Again, not commenting on the fact that my, my little sister and my friend had just completed a really hard 48 hours of work. Let's go back to what I said at the beginning to keep all of us safe reporting on traffic conditions to make sure we knew where and where not to drive. Nobody called to comment on her work ethic. Nobody called to comment on her professionalism. They called to complain about this or that. And it's amazing because she doesn't deserve it. And again, she can't defend herself because she'll look like she's taking advantage of the situation, but I can. Because you know what happens when you pick on little sisters? You have angry big brothers. <laughs> I know, I gotta wrap. And in this case, you have several big brothers who aren't real happy right now. Uh, I love you. Love don't you listen to those comments. You are beautiful. I don't just say it as a line at the end of the show. You're beautiful the way that you are. You're a professional. You're, you're grace under fire. You did a great job for this station the last few days. And I don't want you to take any of that in. Those comments are not about you. It's about the, it's about the people writing them has nothing, has, you're not in those comments. It says everything about them and nothing about you, and I don't want you to forget that. Thank you. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. Back in a moment. A crazy week of weather for people here in Minnesota, as well as other states. It's well, it went all across the, the country after a string of winter storms. And it seems some people are still digging out like us, including a few famous faces. Let's help them out. It's game time, everyone. Here we go. Oh, this is going to be great. Today's game is called Celebrities Snowed In. I'll show you a series of celebs hiding behind snow, and you have to guess who they are. <laughs> <laughs> Playing today, to my left, it's Amber. Yeah. And then Stephanie, everybody. Okay. You're going to look at our big board over here. Oh, and the minute you know, buzz in. So keep your hand above there. Director <gasps> Steve is going to put them up. So, Steve, the first one. Lizzo. Amber, you're right. <laughs> That's right, it is Lizzo. Look at her. See, I told you, it's okay, not, okay. these aren't overly hard. Okay, Jeff, okay. Jeff is a very nice person. Stephology. Okay, here we go. Next <laughs> one, who snowed in? Oh. Oh, Stephanie. <laughs> yes. No. Oh. oh. No, Stephanie for the Ooh. win. Oh, I know. Oh. I can't remember her name. Oh, Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they look like what? The Rosemont. They're they're <laughs> helping out there. Okay, <laughs> Director Steve. Next one, please. You can't see. Oh, uh. Stephanie. <laughs> no, Stephanie, you can't. Who? <laughs> Damn, <laughs> they just said it. Don't say it. Who Tom, is it, Stephanie? Tom somebody? Tom Holland. Tom Holland. Tom Holland. 
Spider-Man, yes! It's Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Oh, oh, oh. Spider-Man! Yeah. Should have said Spider-Man. <laughs> Stephanie. Tom somebody? <laughs> okay, Amber, Stephanie, let's look who's the next one. Oh, I'm Amber. Virus. Okay, yeah. Amber, wait till I call on you. I'm excited. <laughs> Is it? Very She's right, yes. Yeah. It's Miley, I'm with you. Yeah. You and I would be really good on a team together. Okay, Amber, Stephanie, hands okay. above buzzers. Next one, Steve. Um. Stella got her groove back. What? No. Uh, Warrior King. Uh, Can Wakanda. we call a friend? It is Angela Bassett. Oh. And oh. Tina Turner. Oh. Okay. Oh. Hands up. It's all right. Hands up, up buzzers. Steve, next one, please. Oh, um, Justin Bieber's ex-girlfriend. Selena <laughs> <laughs> Gomez. <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> Stephanie's gonna start giving bio bits on the people. Yes, it's Selena Gomez, better known as. Yeah. <laughs> Next, our, she graduated from Purdue University. Okay, here we go. Next one, Steve. Taylor. Oh, Amber. Taylor Swift. You yes, are right, my friend. It is I Taylor Swift. No, it's fine. It's the eyes with t Taylor. Yeah. You can tell. Yeah. Okay, yeah. hands above buzzers. Next one, Steve. Oh, oh my goodness, oh, Stephanie. Late night show host guy. <laughs> Stephanie! <laughs> We're gonna go to school, Steph. Okay, I'll give Jimmy you. Jimmy Kimmel! Jimmy yeah. Kimmel! That's right. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, why didn't we just have her guess what they do for a living? <laughs> or who they're dating? Okay, Amber, Stephanie, next mm. one. Oh. Amber. Rihanna? Yeah. Yeah. Rihanna. Let's see. Rihanna? Rihanna. Rihanna. You got it, yes. Good job. I think I unplugged. Oh, no, I just wanna make sure. I, I thought I unplugged it, but oh. I did. Okay, <laughs> director Steve, next one, please. Oh. oh. <laughs> Stephanie. He's got really good hair. <laughs> Harry Styles. Harry Styles. Yeah. Harry Styles, yeah. <laughs> Jason's like, how many more? I, I couldn't love you two more. Okay, here we go. One more. Oh, um, Adele. Adele yes. is right. Yes. There we go. <laughs> He hosts a late night show, <laughs> Justin Bieber's act, yep. and good, good hair. hair. <laughs> Congratulations to both of our players for going home with the oh, Jason Show mod. Yay! There you go. Cheers. <laughs> we'll be right back. Back in a moment. Thank you, ladies, so much. Oh, that was great. Watch that, Corey. segment. Get ready to feel old, everyone. American Doll, American Girl Doll is releasing new historical dolls. And the new line of these come from the ancient 1990s. <laughs> Meet Isabel and Nikki, fraternal twins who look like they belong in the movie Clueless. These historical dolls come with accessories like a historical portable CD player, a computer with dial-up internet, and a Tamachi toy. Tama Tamagotchi. I don't know. I, kept I, them alive I was 22 them. when that oh came God. out. Reaction online was quick with so many people not realizing the 90s was 30 years ago. <laughs> and the right side of the audience just passed out. So that's right. After announcing the dolls, American Girl tweeted, didn't mean to hurt so many feelings today. <laughs> we'll be right back, back in a moment. Surprise goodbye. You know how this works. I don't know what's in this segment until I read it right now. I've seen some crazy things on airplanes, but nothing like this. Ignore the clown face emoji, but look at what the guy behind the emoji is doing. Someone tweeted this picture out saying, a guy on my five hour flight is using his seat as a standing desk. Oh. Reportedly, he did this for several hours. What? Oh yeah, uh, this is laptop. New. No. <laughs> how about 
no. <laughs> hard pass. No, that's, that's a, I'm a hard pass on that mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Monday on the Jason Show, Christopher Knight, a.k.a. Peter Brady, will join us live. That's right. Here's a story. He's not going to be here. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> Is he? Is he going to be here? Oh, he will be. Okay, anyway, he's coming to the Home and Garden Show. Anyway, that's going to do it for us. If you are watching and you're a kid or adult that's being bullied, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Bye, everybody. Have a good day.